What's up guys, it's your friendly neighborhood turtle hermit Jackie Chun. I'm back and welcome to uh, day two of my uh, little trip to Canada. It's a little mini series that I'm doing. I um, was really feeling kind of down after the last battle that I lost to Kote. Um, biggest reason why is um, since this team's debut on Wi-Fi, I haven't won a single match yet uh, as of this recording. So... And now I have to go up against another fellow battler. Uh, he's been around the community a pretty long time. Definitely one of the OGs of this game, especially in the YouTube YouTube community. I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, this is against Kowalski. So uh, I'm definitely going to be in for a pretty tough match, but I am extremely determined to get my first win with this team so we're definitely going to see how it all goes down and um we'll just go ahead and jump right into it i'm going to lead with um Yuxi, actually and he's actually going to lead off with a crowbat not a bad lead choice for him a psychic seems really obvious but i need to scout if it's the stallbreaker set or, or a probat set aka choice band U turns the worst case scenario from him, and I could get Pursuit Trap, so I U turn out based on that, figuring I'll get switch advantage either way. He does go for the taunt, so now I know it's the Stallbreaker set, so I go to Tran, who Crobat can't really touch outside of Super Fang, so I'm thinking here. Um, I decide to scout some more by going for Fire Blast, and I figure with Life Orb I can dent anything that comes in, even if he brings in a resist. He uh, hard switches to Suicune, which in hindsight actually tells me he may not have U turn. And after leftovers, I get a decent 25% off of it. Now, I'm thinking this is offensive Suicune, which is the most common set these days. And I don't know if he'll call mine right off the bat or scout and just go for water stab. So I'm not wanting to risk losing Heat Tran due to over prediction. I switched to Quagsire. Uh, Quagsire really shines in this game, um, and you guys will see. But um, it beats common water types like Starmie and Suicune. So he goes for call mine right off the bat. Uh, most people don't know what set Quagsire runs for OU, so I pro felt pretty safe going for Toxic there, but um, he actually goes back to Crobat, which was a good play. So he was either predicting that or Earthquake, so I went back to Heatran, um, since I couldn't do anything to Crobat. He does show the Super Fang, which was the best play for him. So I was expecting Suicune to come back in, so I go for Fire Blast again, not wanting to overpredict in case he stayed in for some reason. But he actually goes to Blissey, so he has several answers for Heatran. And we're switching around a lot, so I decide here that I need to get Stealth Rock up so he doesn't keep switching around for free. Especially since he has Crobat, so I go back to Yuxi. Did consider Taunt in case Blissey was the rocker, since he showed it pretty early. But he double switches to Suicune, which worked out great for him. Um, but he's going to get a free move here, whether it's Calm Mind or a Water Stab, so I go... I get up the Stealth Rock. He's actually going to reveal Raikou here as I set it up. And I thought it was weird at first, but in hindsight, Suicune isn't that powerful unless it has some boost. So I know Shadow Ball is coming, but I didn't want anything else to take any damage since Juxi's done his job. So I U-turn out, let it take the Shadow Ball, and bring something in safely. So I go to Quagsire, and I need to scout for Hidden Power Grass. So the plan here was to try to bait it by double switching to Scizor. And if he switches, he gives me the notion that he doesn't carry it. But he actually goes back to Crobat, probably expecting me to stay into either Toxic or Earthquake. Now this Scizor is Scarfed, and Stallbreaker Crobat is deceptively bulky. So a Bullet Punch is not going to do enough to KO at that range. So didn't want a U-turn because I was expecting Super Fang. And he probably would still outspeed me. But um, Brave Bird was possible too, but that's pretty rare seeing them together. So I went back to Heat trying to take the Super Fang. With Stealth Rock being up, I'm a little bit more comfortable now because now Crobat can't just come in whenever it wants and I force it to roost at some point. So I go for the taunt this time and predicting either Suicune or Blissing to come back in. He does go back to Suicune. Now I don't have Explosion on Heatran, but I do have Hidden Power Grass, so wasn't comfortable about getting the Oko from there though. Um, not at that range. So he goes for Ice Beam predicting Quagsire to come back in. And I did want to hide Hidden Power Grass for now, so... Now, expecting Crobat to come back in, I decided to pull a double switch to Yuxi. And this could have turned out bad, since if he stayed in the Calm Mind to attempt to punch through Quagsire, Hydro Punt would have O-Code Yuxi at this range, so... He actually goes to Celebi, though, which was a little bit surprising for me. Uh, wouldn't you know it? Uh, I finally switch 
uh, Flash Cannon to Psychic on Jirachi so I could handle fighting types, and Celebi was the biggest reason I had Flash Cannon in the first place, so he's got to get out of the way before Jirachi can even sweep. Um, and I was expecting him to switch out since I showed U-Turn already, and he wouldn't want Celebi to take a four times effective attack, so I predicted the switch went for Thunder Wave, but he actually stayed in, revealing that Celebi was the rocker, so... I U-turn out and I go to Scizor and he goes to Raikou, saw the life orb earlier so I actually plan to just U-turn around this thing and um, here he does go for the Thunderbolt and here I have a decision to make, um, he switched out earlier to get me thinking I didn't have hidden power grass so I felt safe initially but something told me I needed to scout one more time and the fact that he's at less than 10% also means he can't switch out since Stealth Rock is on the field unless his last is the spinner, so I go back to Scizor and he shows the hidden power grass here, which is excellent play on his part since he hit it earlier. Uh, I almost fell for it. So he brings Crobat in. We want to conserve as much health on Scizor as possible so to keep checking Celebi, because I need it gone if Jirachi's going to sweep. So expecting Super Fang again, I go to Yuxi, who's low, but he goes for a roost. Now at this point, I realize I don't have a lot to damage this Corbat directly unless I want to reveal something else, and I'd rather keep things hidden until necessary. So I stay in, fire off a Psychic, hadn't seen anything else that could hit Yuxi for super effective damage since Raikou's gone. Uh, he does go for Taunt to prevent me from paralyzing something, and I get a special defense drop. So because of the drop, if he stays in, he's going to lose the matchup, so he has to switch out. I predict the switch knowing this, go for the U-turn to maintain advantage, he actually goes to Suicune, probably predicting me to stay in and Psychic again, and he'd be able to get a free move off had I done that, and I end up going to Scizor. Now the next couple sequences are questionable on my part, I U-turn on again, I don't quite remember my thought process here, but I either wanted prior damage on Suicune uh, to threaten a one-hit KO later, or I wanted to bait the Water Stab by ending the U-turn sequence with Quagsire. Uh, probably a combination of both is what I'm guessing. So he decides to set up a Calm Mind. Just keep in mind that I am still assuming this is the standard offensive Suicune, guys. Uh, this turn I do predict him to go back to Crobat, so I wanted to meet him on the switch by going to Yuxi, but he stays in and goes for the Ice Beam, which is unfortunate for me since that plus one is his most definite one-hit KO. And probably would have been without the boost, taking Stealth Rock into account. Account. Um, I didn't really calc it, so Ice Beam was really the only thing he could really realistically go for in that situation. So figuring he's going to stay in at this point, so I go back to Quagsire since I know it can beat Suicune one on one. He goes for Ice Beam again, and after left leftovers, it doesn't even three hit KO, and that shows how powerful Quagsire is against Suicune. And as well as Starmie, as long as they don't carry Grass Knot, which is extremely rare. So I switch out again despite this and decide to reveal Jirachi at this point, thinking he'll either Ice Beam again to punch through Quagsire or Calm Mind again. Also started thinking about potential hacks like a Freeze or Critical Hit, and I wanted to keep Quagsire safe from that until Suicune is gone. But I over predict and he switches to Surf. Very bad play on my part as I get meaningless damage on Jirachi and Quagsire would have been just fine. Um, I can't let Jirachi get 3 hit KO so I make a desperate move, go back to Quagsire, hoping he'll Surf again. And he does and I get health back due to Water Absorb. Now here I figure he'll go back to Ice Beam since now I plan on staying in and stalling the Suicune out. So, so I decide to recover to start the Toxic Stall process. However, he does reveal his final move here, and it actually turns out to be Rest. I was less speechless at this point and a little bit irked. Um, 1 mil 456 used this strategy against me, and then Kote did, and now Kowalski is. So I'm wondering if this is a popular strategy on Wi Fi, because it seems like everybody's trying to be like Kingdra now. Although, uh, K Wall's not running Chestoberry, so. Regardless, I refuse to lose to the strategy a third time. Uh, so I start planning on how I'm going to deal with this Suicune. And now that he's revealed rest, so... Uh, to those guys who used this against me before, uh, thanks for the practice. Guys, really appreciate it. So, initial plan was to go to Jirachi so I could wish up. But I switch gears and go back to Quagsire. Um, and I do this so I can bait the Ice Beam when he wakes up and catch it with an Encore as long as I don't get frozen. And um, 
He does wake up, goes for Ice Beam, I reveal Encore. Initially, I thought it was too early to Encore as I could have used Toxic first. But again, I'm trying to eliminate hacks as much as possible since Quagsire is the only hard counter I have to Suicune. Now, continuing the trend of eliminating hacks, I go to Jirachi since if he freezes that, I could give myself the best chance possible to thaw out. And I can also set up Calm Minds to minimize the damage, which is exactly what I do on the next turn. After looking how much a resisted Ice Beam does at plus one, and I've been in this matchup once before, I figure after setting up one Calm Mind, I can throw a Wish in the air, continue the sequence while healing at the same time. That way if he stays in, I'll have the advantage. And uh, worst case scenario, whoever gets the first crit wins. I don't think I considered him switching to Blissey though. This is actually equally good as Blissey is not a threat offensively. And Blissey beats every single Calm Mind Jirachi set out there except for Calm Mind Wish. Which is designed to destroy Blissey and stall in general. So I was confident in this matchup too, so I stay in. Now realizing... He's not going to beat Combine Wish Jirachi with just Blissey on its own. He actually is going to go to Celebi after a couple of exchanges here. Now, I've got a few Calm Minds under my belt. And um, I'm figuring so long as Earth Power doesn't get a critical hit, I really wasn't worried about it. And I'm actually a little bit ahead on the narration because we do go through a few exchanges here. Because he tries to go for the Seismic Toss. But he is realizing that he's not going to win out. So uh, the plan for him here is actually to. Uh, he's actually going to reveal the Leech Seed as I throw another Wish in the air. Now the Leech Seed actually surprised me a little bit. Because it is going to hit. And Jir since Jirachi is going to be seated. Uh, I'm going to have to be even more careful how I play this out. Um, otherwise, Blissey could actually beat me uh, when combined with Leech Seed. So pretty unfortunate here. Um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna get into a nasty Star War in a couple of turns. Um, but he is gonna stay in as I go for the Wish again, and I'm just this is what Calm My Wish Jirachi does. Um, it wishes to prevent critical hits from taking it out. And it just calm mines up till it gets all the way to plus six and then sweeps. And that's how it beats stall because even special walls and special tanks won't be able to take attacks at plus six. He does stay in, goes for earth power, so I'm positive his last move is a grass stab. Doesn't do much, unfortunately, as I set up another wish. And after seeing that damage, he goes back to Blissey. He fares better now that he's got lead seed on me, but I stick with the plan. Still pretty confident I can win the matchup. And uh, really, this is honestly where the nasty Star War begins. Uh, the best way I can put the next several turns is that it's just a game of cat and mouse here. Now, I figured I can still beat Blissey as long as I don't time my wishes incorrectly at any point. As the only way he will win is if he catches me with a seismic toss on a turn where I don't wish. And a second one will finish me before I can heal. Uh, once he revealed Wish, I knew it was Wish Bliss. So he would have Protect as well. So I have to take that into account and play around it when I do finally attack. So basically, in a nutshell, I can't play too aggressively. And even when I get to plus six, I'm going to have to see how much damage I do with my moves to make sure I can KO this Blissey. Uh, early in the sequence, though, I decided I needed to apply pressure so that he wouldn't just sit and seismic toss me all day. I wanted to try and force him to go into the wish protect sequence. I do get several crits so it speeds up the process. It's tough to say if they mattered or not. You could argue that they did since he would just seismic toss again until Leech Seed did its work. But he has to wish now. He had to wish early instead otherwise he'd be ahead in the damage race. And I could argue it wasn't that big of a deal because it would have got to the, that point where he'd wish anyway and he still couldn't one hit KO me. So at that point it would have just been mind games. He may have actually beaten me out due to Leech Seed but I'll leave the theory on to others. Uh, several points during this sequence he switches up moves to try and catch me since if I get to plus six he'll be at a huge disadvantage. 
and I believe at one point here I do get to plus five and then try to attack but I didn't like the damage so in fear of missing the two hit KO I went back to my sequence of call my wish to get another boost and I do finally take the blissey down now the next several turns are uh, basically him trying to bring a plus six Jirachi down with a combination of damage disruption and leech seed he brings Celebi in first to go for an earth power since Celebi resists everything I have and unfortunately he doesn't get a crit and um, I was wondering if the special defense drop on Psychic mattered and if Psychic was a 2 hit KO without it not really sure if you guys can tell me let me know but um, it's unfortunate because Celebi is going to go down after this um, because it's, it's tough to come back once you get it <laughs> once you're facing a plus six plus six call mine Jirachi so um, uh, very unfortunate he did not get the crit on the earth power Celebi goes down he's now gonna bring Crobat in and the plan here for him is to taunt me it's really the best thing he can do to make sure I don't wish and heal my HP so um, I am going to Oko Crobat with the Psychic, but Crobat did do its job. Uh, I do get another crit, but that one was useless at that point. So he's actually going to reveal his last, which is Infernape, and, um, which was a bit surprising for me because te testing this team, Infernape was giving me a few issues. Not nothing too, too major, but it was definitely something I had to watch out for. So. I see the life orb recall after he U-turns out, so that tells me he's the physical mix ape set. And initially, I, w I was wondering why Infernape didn't come out earlier, but I guess in hindsight, though, there wasn't really a turn where I really gave him a chance to bring it in. Um, but anyway, he goes to Suicune. I do end up two-hit KOing it at this point, and um, it is looking pretty bad for him, unfortunately. Uh, I, I am going to finish it off with a Thunderbolt, although I could have honestly gone for Psychic at that point. Uh, either way, it would have done him in. So he's going to bring Infernape in again. And at this point, he has to go for close combat um, and hope for the critical hit. Uh, that's the only way he's going to break through this Jirachi. Uh, Overheat would KO me too if that critted as well, but there is the chance that he could miss. Unfortunately, he does not get the crit and I'm able to finish his last off with a psychic and that is going to be the game a very Dirty win, but I, I had to take what I could get at this point I did manage to pull it out. But anyway, it was a great game Kowalski definitely helped to play you again sometime and uh, That's pretty much it guys until next episode. I'm out. Peace